Hello, my name is Robin Hancock, and I'm going to be talking to you, to you today about encouraging literacy development in your child. I'm going to start with this statistic, and it's kind of a scary one, but it says two-thirds of students who cannot read proficiently by the end of fourth grade will end up in jail or on welfare. This is a staggering statistic, but I included it on the cover slide just to show you the seriousness of this issue. Today our presentation will cover 1. Literacy statistics, 2. What the research says works, and 3. What you can do at home. We're going to follow this learn, model, and do at home organization throughout our presentation today. So let's start out with 1. Literacy statistics. Let's learn why this is such a serious issue. Starting with this first graph. A range of factors that influence kindergarten readiness scores. Okay, so plus 8%, your child can improve plus 8% just because you have strong reading habits in the home, reading a story every night, things of that nature. Participating in some sort of reading program outside of school can increase your student's readiness by, excuse me, by plus 9%. Having older children in the home that model good reading habits would increase your child's score by plus 10%. Attending a pre-K program before kindergarten would increase your child's readiness by 17%. And growing up in a middle-income family can increase your child's readiness by 18%. Now, you might ask, what does that have to do with anything? Well, on average, middle-income families use more language with their children. The more language children hear, the more language they acquire, and the bigger their vocabulary vocabularies become at an earlier age. Reading aloud has been proven to be the single most important thing that parents can do for their children. Reading interactively, meaning asking questions, talking about the pictures, talking about the author, who an illustrator is, can increase your child's IQ by six points. Vocabulary development by age three can predict reading proficiency in the third grade. So let me read that one again. The vocabulary that your child has when that child is three years old can predict whether your child will be proficient on grade level in reading in the third grade. The second graph talks about the likelihood of being a high achiever in reading in grade eight. Now I know if you've got a young child that seems awfully far away. Well, let me explain why it's relative and so important. If you look over here to the very far right, if your child were to score in the 91 to 100th percentile on that third grade reading test, then he or she has a likelihood of over well over a 50% chance of being above grade level in reading in grade 8. Conversely, if your child scored around 10% on that same reading test, he or she barely has any chance about a 1% chance of being a high achiever in reading in grade 8. So these development tracks kind of start very early, which is why early literacy is such a big issue. Children below the 70th percentile in reading at grade 3 do not often catch up to their peers. And in fact, the bottom one-third of students at grade 3 in their scores had a 1% chance of reaching higher levels as they grew, grew older, and that's what we talked about over here. Language ability in preschool stands for 90% of the difference in reading abilities in kindergarten. So, if your child enters preschool with a large vocabulary, then that's going to stand for 90% of the reason why he or she is a good reader in kindergarten. Let's move on to number two what the research says works. So what can you do about this? The reason I am presenting this information to you is because we're going to use it as a model for what you can do at home. So let's talk specifically starting right from when babies are born and before. Before babies are born, they're listening to the language that you're saying. After they're born at about eight months, they're even trying to put some words together. Babies mimic sounds and words by 12 months, and they start by that babbling and cooing. So all that babbling and cooing that your children or babies are doing, that's the start of their language. 
Between ages one and two, babies begin using one word sentences, and between two and four years old, they're using multi-word sentences and can say their own names and have a vocabulary of about 270 words. However, all of this is dependent on your baby's experience. Language development is dependent on experience. Babies who hear language learn the language. So if they're not hearing words during these young, early years and months, they're not going to use the language and that transpires into having a harder time learning to read and write once they enter school or before they enter school. Books have to be in the home and read. A lot of studies that I've read have said that Americans will spend the money on books, but then the books sit in the home and don't get read. They have to be in the home and read for your children to build that vocabulary, background knowledge, kind of that would be information about different situations that they can apply to the stories, and are learning what sounds make up different words. Now, we're going to watch a video about what teachers do in preschool classrooms that's research-based to help children learn early literacy skills. Whether you've had formal training in literacy or not, chances are that you already do many activities with your children throughout the day that researchers have shown to be effective in preparing young children to become leaders and writers. Watch while early childhood educator Dr. Teresa Boulay shows you what you're doing right and why it works. There's a great deal of research in early childhood focusing on early literacy that has produced five predictors or characteristics that are known to predict later reading and writing achievement. So if children have a lot of rich experiences in these five areas, they'll learn to read and write with more ease. Those five areas are oral language, phonemic awareness, alphabet awareness, concepts about print, and early writing with inventive spelling. It's really important that preschool teachers are aware of these five predictors and are thinking about them in their planning as well as throughout the day and looking for spontaneous teachable moments. That's called an anchor. And they lower it down into the water and it lands on the ground and it keeps the boat to stay in one place. A teachable moment is when a child is really interested in something, it's purposeful to him, and the teacher sees that and takes that opportunity to come in and to help the child to further understand or expose the child to a new aspect of literacy. Oral language is a foundation for future reading and writing. There is a lot of research that shows that there's a correlation between vocabulary and reading comprehension. Eye contact, and you know that it's all about them, and they want to share that. They want to make the eye contact and talk about all the things that you're talking about. Women. Women. Phonemic awareness is the ability to hear, identify, and manipulate sounds or phonemes in a language. It's an ear-like skill, so children are using phonemic awareness are able to hear and identify how sounds are the same or how they're similar. When discussing alphabet awareness, it's important to remember that we're not just talking about children's awareness of letters, the names of the letters, and the sounds of the letters, but really it's extremely important to remember that children need to understand the purpose of those letters. What are those symbols? How do I use them? Take those basic letter recognition and you just incorporate it into your day. We had a child come in, she was talking about the tooth fairy. She had lost a tooth. 
So we go on the big screen TV in our classroom and we, we Google teeth and we spell it out together and oh, what letter you can teeth begins with, you know, we guess T and then the, the next two letters are tricky because, you know, they're, they're three and four and five and that's, although they could get the E sound, but not two E's. And we put in teeth and then we hit search and it comes back with this amazing picture of teeth and they could find teeth and they could recognize mouth, I think it was, because they talked about it was in your mouth. And then it turns into a counting activity, and you just you take it wherever the kids are, and you just run with it. The children should be bumping into opportunities to see print in their environment, in their centers, in their dramatic play centers, uh, the names in their cubbies, signs around the room. So they understand the purpose and the function of print, and they learn a lot about print and how it works. In our classroom, we have environmental print all the time. We have the exit door. We have all the toys labeled in English and Spanish. We have children that have, you know, their, their names. They come in, they sign in in the morning. All the names are on the cubbies. The pictures that we do over the course of the day, the activity that we do, we take pictures, and everything's labeled underneath. So it's like they're constantly being inundated with words and letters and letter sounds. To expand children's print knowledge or concepts about print, teachers need to be really careful or explicit in their read aloud practice. If they're reading a book to children, be aware of using uh, words like the title is or the author is, or use words to describe what they're doing. Apples and Pumpkins by Ian Rockwell, pictures by Lindy Rockwell. Or help children to look carefully at the illustrations. Antonio says there's a bird. And you should be able to see the script. Teachers can follow along with their finger with the text to demonstrate that there's there's something there that they're reading, that that text is important. Even though children aren't able to read that yet, they learn that that text tells the story. Antonio, could you point to the frog in the picture? There are a lot of ways that teachers can encourage children to get meaningful, purposeful writing experiences. Sign-ins are a wonderful way where children can understand the purpose of writing. When they come to the classroom in the morning, they know that no one will know if they're there if they don't sign in. One of the first things that the children tune into when they're learning how to write is how to write their name. They usually start with the first letter of their name. Then they progress to the first letter in people that are close to them. There's so much research that shows that these five predictors are critical in children's future reading and writing development. Oral language, phonemic awareness, alphabet awareness, concepts about print, and early writing with inventive spelling. It's really important that the teacher be aware of them and be able to think about them and sort of think through the lens of these five predictors throughout the day. So that video discussed five predictors. Oral language, which would be conversation, asking and answering questions, carrying on a conversation with your child. Phonemic awareness, which is just where they're aware and able to identify and reproduce sounds in language, like the EE -E sound in teeth she was talking about, E. Alphabetic awareness, identifying letters by themselves and in words. Concepts of prints would just be using signs, uh, being able to read recipes to, that we all use to navigate through life. Of course, children are really going to look at signs, maybe a stop sign or the Cheerios box or the McDonald's sign. Those are the types of things that they see, but they, they also use those signs to kind of navigate through lives as well, their lives. Writing would be communicating through the written words, such as writing your name. Uh, teachers of young children, they listen to what the kids are talking about, like the young child that came in after losing a tooth, and the teacher based the activities for the day around the teeth. Teachers look for those moments where the students are engaged. For instance, those students were very interested in that one child losing his or her teeth, and so they were really interested in how teeth sounded, where teeth were, counting teeth. Right there, you've talked about literacy concepts, math concepts, and even so a little bit of science. So 
those are things that you could also do at home. Maybe there is at the grocery store a certain kind of food your child likes. You could read the boxes. You could count how many different types of that type of food there are. Those would just be a few suggestions. Okay, so now we've talked about what teachers do and how you can incorporate in that in, at home. But let's also talk about specific activities you could do at home. So this is the do part of our presentation. We're going to watch one more quick little video that just kind of shows you the importance of early literacy and how it might affect your child as he or she goes through school and why it would be important to start now with even your babies encouraging those early literacy skills. Joey was your average elementary age boy. In kindergarten, he quickly adjusted to the school day and made many friends. Kindergarten was a great year. Joey performed well to a structured day and was often excited to get on the bus in the morning. Some topics were difficult for him, but his parents figured he would learn them in time. As Joey entered first grade, he was excited to start the year. With a well-liked teacher, his parents knew he'd be successful. Joey knew many of his friends would be in his class, and he eagerly awaited his first day of school. The school year started out slowly, reviewing many of the skills that Joey had learned in kindergarten. This was very beneficial to Joey, as he needed his kindergarten skills reinforced. Each day when he came home, he had a smile on his face, and begged his mom for a play date with his friends. But as the school year progressed, the work became harder. Joey was now required to read and write independently. Joey noticed his peers progressing, but was struggling to keep up. His parents noticed a change in his behaviors at home. He often woke up in the morning and was reluctant to go to school. He no longer wanted playdates with his friends, who at one time were the sun and the moon to him. He was even resistant to talking with his parents, and lately the teacher was consistently reaching out to his parents, telling them he was struggling to get his schoolwork done, and often refused to participate in class. His homework was not coming back completed, and he was falling behind his peers. His parents were lost for what was going on. And then came the day they sat down with the teacher and asked, What more can we do for our son? The teacher suggested they spend more time working on literacy at home. Isn't that your job? His parents thought. Joey's mom left the meeting annoyed and frustrated. Why wasn't anyone trying harder to reach her son? Joey's mom went home and scoured the internet for resources. As she searched, she came across many interesting articles. One taught her about the positive effects of reading aloud. Increased brain development, knowledge, language acquisition, bonding, literacy skills, and a love of reading. Another read, it takes 1,000 hours of lap time for young children to have the readiness skills in place to learn to read. If we begin literacy exposure at birth, children who receive one half hour a day of lap time will have the developmental skills they need to read when they come to kindergarten. But if we wait until children are five years old and enter in kindergarten, it will take three hours a day of lap time catch these children up with their peers in order to be ready to read. She continued, research shows children have a better chance of becoming fully literate adults if reading is encouraged in the home. 
studies show beyond dispute that children's achievement in school improves with increased parent involvement in education. And finally, for a child, the more time spent with a parent reading aloud increases his or her level of attachment, enhances a sense of security, and imparts the knowledge that their parent feels they are worthwhile people with whom to spend time. Joey's mom was determined to set her son on the right path. She collaborated with the teacher and even asked for suggestions on how to improve her son's education. Within a few months, Joey was slowly returning to his old self. His confidence was back, and he even restored old friendships while making new ones. His relationship with his parents improved, and on top of it all, his schoolwork was improving as well. Joey's parents, like many others, were never aware of the benefits of reading at home with their children. Just as Joey's parents did, many parents believe it is the school's sole responsibility. But as you can see, it takes collaboration between school and home to instill the importance of education and literacy in our young students. Luckily, Joey's parents and the school worked hard at the start. In some cases, students go on to struggle their entire life with literacy. So what did we learn in that video? Well, we learned that read alouds with your child from birth are super important. They encourage brain development and increase knowledge of sounds. It shows children how to read print from left to right and fosters a love of reading. So read alouds from birth are hugely important for language, those that begins the reading and the writing skills. Also, encouraging reading from in the home from birth your child has a better chance of being fully literate, reading and writing to proficiency, if she or he or she are encouraged to read at home. That increased parent involvement in your child's daycare, preschool, or school, your child will have an increased self-worth because he or she knows that, you're, that they are worth your time. And research shows that children who have involved parents at school are more successful in school. Also, if you collaborate with your child's care provider or teacher by talking to this person he or she can give you advice on what he or she sees that your child needs and activities that might interest in your child. Now let's talk about milestones and some specific things that you can do from birth through age five. So from six to twelve months here are some of the things your child's doing. And your child is communicating with you by babbling and cooing. He or she likes to hear your voice. They might even say words like ma, ba, da, and responds to his or her own name. He or she might even pat to a picture to show that he or she would like to talk about or listen to you talk about that picture more. So what can you do? Well, you can talk back and forth with your baby, make eye contact, cuddle, point to things, follow your baby's cues, play games such as peekaboo or pat a cake. You can use board and cloth books, books with baby faces, and nursery rhymes. Moving on to 12 to 24 months, here's what your child is doing. Your child has started to say two to four words, uh, phrases, pointing at pictures, uh, wants you to read to them and might even be naming pictures with the book right side up. What can you do with your child during 12 to 24 months? Smile and answer when your child speaks or points. Let your child help turn the page and let them name things. Use books in your routine, such as nap time and play time. You could also use books to calm or distract your child while waiting, maybe at a doctor's office or anywhere else where you might be, might be waiting. You could use board books, rhyming books, picture books, and books that name things to increase that vocabulary. 
two to three years old, your child will be able to do these things. And they have added two to new four, they are adding two to four new words per day to their vocabulary. They're naming familiar objects and they like to read the same book over and over and over again. I know my son liked Goodnight Moon and we read it almost every night. Complete sentences and rhymes with familiar stories. What can you do? Start asking questions, that interactive reading, like where is the dog? Where is that? Be willing to read that same book over and over again. As you read, talk about the pictures, point things out, name them, and keep using books in the daily routine. Three to four years, this is what your child's doing to prepare for literacy. Here's some things, some thoughts that your child's having. They might recite whole phrases from a book. Uh, they might move toward letter recognition. They can begin to detect rhyming words and pretend to read to dolls and stuffed animals. So they're going to engage in that pretend play where they're mimicking what you're doing if they see you reading to them. What can you do? Ask, what happens next? In familiar stories, point out letters and numbers. Point out words that we begin with all begin with the same sound. Together, make up stories about the pictures even. You could use picture books. Uh, books that are telling longer stories, and maybe even counting in alphabet books at this point. Four to five years, they're starting to copy letters and numbers. They're even able to sit still longer. They're able to listen longer, so their thought processes are getting longer. They're recognizing numbers and letters, being able to retell stories. They can make rhymes, and they're learning letter names and sounds. What can you do? You can relate the story to your child's own experiences. For instance, if you're making pancakes, you could read a story about making pancakes, such as if you give a pig a pancake. Let your child see you read. Ask your child to tell the story. Encourage writing and drawing. Point out the letters in your child's name. Some materials. You might want to start with some fairy tales or legends. Books with longer stories and fewer pictures to kind of talk about and start taking educated guesses about what's going on in the story. Also, through these last three stages, three stages, you would want to let your child choose which book to read and find things that interest your child. I have checked with a lot of different uh, sources of information to bring you this presentation. Begin to read literacy statistics. L. Danielle, Lisa Danielle, she made the video, What Can We Do? The Importance of Early Literacy Exposure. It was one of the, the second YouTube clip that we watched. The Governor's Foundation in Why Literacy Matters. K5 Learning, the K5 Learning blog, Study Children's Academic Future Decided by Grade 3. Reach Out and Read National Center. That was the infographic that showed the milestones of early literacy that we just looked at. Springer, The Developing Brain, Birth to Age 8, about the brain development and what your child was doing even before birth, listening to language. The Center for Early Childhood Education was the early literacy eclipse that we watched from Eastern Connecticut State University. My last words to you are talk, talk, talk to your baby. Read, read, read to your child. Today a reader, tomorrow a leader. Thank you.